All right, guys, welcome back to Motorin PSUs. Today, we are doing the highest end build so far. Usually on the channel, we make the best value for money build or we we'll really look at our budget, but today, that's not the case. Today, we're using a Ryzen 9 7950X with 16 core, 32 threads, paired with 32 gigs of DDR5, with an X670 Pro RS from ASRock, and we are pairing it with an RTX 4070 Ti Aero from Gigabyte. So it's gonna be a pretty high-end build, and with all of that, we're using a true terabyte PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive from NetHack, and we are using all the rest of the components from the sponsor of this video, iTech. So we have their new Evolic 240, their all-in-one liquid cooler, then we have a 1200 watt 80 plus platinum power supply, the PF1200 from iTech. Here, just to dissipate the idea that those power supplies are cheap, they can also be very good. And we also have the latest fan, which have a little surprise for you in storage, and the dark cave white, their new case. So it's gonna be definitely a high end build. I say we get into building. Alrighty guys, so let's get building this combo with a Ryzen 9 7950X, 16 core, 32 threads, an ASRock X670E Pro RS, two XPG Lancer RGB DDR5 RAM sticks by 16 gigabytes each, and then this two terabyte NetHack drive. Let's get working. First of all, we take out the motherboard, I say. This is our motherboard. Let's see what else is inside the box of the Pro RS. So they give you an installation guide, manual, and then they give you those things, some screws, then they give you this little clip, or screws, and then this thing. Then, of course, they give you the Wi-Fi antenna, because the motherboard has Wi-Fi, and they give you some SATA cables, pretty standard packaging. Let's actually take a look at the motherboard itself. Now, this is a very good motherboard. As you can see, instead of having integrated Wi-Fi, it has a M.2 Wi-Fi, so you can upgrade it in the future. This is something I really like, actually. And the cable goes up there into the antennas, which are right there. Then we have the socket. Now the socket is LGA, guys, because AMD made the switch. So that's really interesting, too. M.2, they give you this one, which should be PC Express 5.0. Then they give you a Hyper M.2 and another M.2 here. Those two should be your main ones. This can be like for some PC Express 3.0 storage drive. Seems like a very well made motherboard. The heat sinks seem solid. I say it's time to take it out and slot the CPU in. Please don't bully me for my sisters. Something I also like is the fact that they have the battery down there. So you can take it out even if you have a GPU mounted. That's something that more brands should do, really. Okay, it should be free. So, back looks good. Again, this has an AM5 backplate. I say we have. Taking a look at it, it's more than enough. It's time to slot the CPU in. Okay, so here we are installing this Ryzen 9 7950X into this motherboard. They also give you a sticker here in case you wanna flex on everybody. It's my first time mounting it. The triangle faces this way and it faces this way on the socket too. So it goes in this way. Now nothing could go wrong. Okay, so now with the CPU mounted, I say we put the NVMe SSD in there. Okay, so it's now time to mount the RAM and then our main combo will be finished. Well, we will still have to put a cooler on top of it. This is some Lancer RGB RAM. Our combo is finally finished. Let's unbox the Evolic 240. They give you all the fans, not pre-installed, so you can put them the way you prefer. And look, even the fan cable is white. Here is our only one cooler, fully white, white sleeved only one cables, and so far it looks very nice. Okay, so since uh, AM5 actually has a backplate included with the motherboard that you cannot remove, we could not use the standard mounting kit from uh, uh, iTech, but we had to use the Threadripper. Um, kit that was included with the AM4 brackets. So now we'll show you how I did it. As you can see, we're just using those compression screws. So this point, we can go ahead and use the included thermal grease, thermal paste, and apply it right there. I will do a single dot. I think it should be enough right there. And now we can go ahead and actually reinstall our cooler. But first of all, let's remove the sticker because we don't want a hundred degrees. 
we can now mount it properly. We are gonna put the tubes this way. So step one, we are actually applying it there and then getting our thread ripper screws, putting them just a little bit in and now we are tightening them up. Okay, so this seems like a pretty good mount to me. We're installed. Okay, time to unbox the case. Dark Cave from iTech, newly released. I have to say, it feels premium. Fully meshed panel, double meshed, that's really nice. So they give you a nice uh, remote controller, they give you a speaker, they give you a ton of screws, and then they give you some zip ties, okay. Okay guys, we are here unboxing the PF1200 from Isaac. There we go. Really nice packaging from Isaac actually. Guys, I cannot tell you how heavy this thing is. It's really heavy, it's a very good power supply. Remember, with power supplies, the heavier the better. As you can see, it has tons of connectivity and it's a very nice, sleek black. We have the cable, obviously. And now we can also take a look at the cables that they give us. And let's see how they look. Okay, so here are the cables. They come in a very nice flat sleeved. And the 24 pin even has this kind of cover, which I like. And they give you a lot of them. Now I will actually partition them quickly so I can tell you exactly how many of them they give you. Okay, so it has one 24 pin, two CPU cables, which we will need today. Three PCIe cables, very nice. And then for say Molex, we have a total of four cables for these. Well, three actually, I apologize. Three of these and it's actually, it's actually four PCIe cables. That's a lot of PCIe cables, guys. More PCIe cables for our collection of PCIe cables. Exactly, we have a ton <laughs> of PCIe cables, guys. So I say we can get mounting. Nice. Okay guys, so at this point the PC is basically done. The only thing that's missing is the graphic card. So I say, just go ahead and take a look at this new Gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti error that we just got. And other than of course doing some peel off, which we will do in a second, they also give us 
all these uh, GPU standoffs here to avoid it from sagging, which is nice. And you give you a variety of screws with it. That is also very nice. And of course, we have this infamous 12 pin adapter that converts true 8 pin into a single 12 pin and goes straight into the graphic card. So we'll have to cable manage that. So I say we get started with getting ready to build this and we build this. Okay, so it's time to put the actual graphic card in and she's doing it, so let's see if she does a good job. There we go. Seems nice, press it in, don't be shy. That's a good, get it the job. Okay guys, so the GPU sucks dramatically so we are putting this standoff in and basically it goes on the motherboard then on top of it you attach something which you attach on the graphic card and it will prevent the gpu from sagging so we'll do it okay so now this pc looks already finished right but actually i say we put three fans on the bottom and what we have here today straight from itech is their latest model of fan they told me they're very special, so let's take a look if they actually are. Outright, we see some very weird cables, which is a good start. And then here are all the fans. Ooh, they are very unique. So what's special about these fans is basically you don't have to connect them. Now you might be saying, what do you mean you don't have to connect them? Well, they do have some pins on the side and they are especially designed to fit with the other fans with the same model and they click into one another so they are basically wireless and that's what they are called. They are wireless fans because there's no wire. Basically you connect three fans and at the end of it, you have a single wire coming out of it. Now we will show you the installation and mount them in the case. So basically you just click them and they are just fully connected. They're not gonna separate as you can see and the electricity passes through. So we can go ahead and do it on all three sides. Now these are the included cables. We have all the screws. And then there's gonna be a single cable coming out of it, which is gonna be this one. And you just plug it on the back here, right there. And then you connect this thing. Okay, so with the PC finished, I say the cable management too. Looks pretty nice. We finally close the back door. Okay guys, so we don't have good news. What happened is, uh, as you can see, we dismounted the whole PC and I tested with another power supply because I thought, okay, maybe it was just the power supply that's broken, but when I first turned it on, the motherboard flashed its LEDs and now the motherboard does not boot. So what happened is we got a power supply tester and we are testing the fans that are hooked up to the power supply and the power supply doesn't work. So in short, our power supply is broken and uh, being broken, it shorts at our motherboard and now the motherboard is dead. So yes. Okay guys, so everything is working and I dismounted the PC for no reason because the lights in my house were working. But this thing behind me, the plug, was not working because somebody that lived with me had the electricity go off on the downside because we have different circuits and did not activate it again. So I dismounted the whole PC for nothing. Okay, so I built it back, took me 20 minutes and now everything is working. I think it's gorgeous, honestly, it's fantastic. And I say it's time to get to working with it, set up the fans, set up the profiles and see how fast it goes. So. Let's go guys. Okay, so we've gone over and tested everything. Let's get started. So I know you wanna know about the games first, so we will start with that. And uh, we will divide it by resolution because for 1080p, there's not much to say. Uh, it will max out every game possible uh, at 300 Hz. So for Apex Legends, it's maxing out the 300 FPS mark and the 1% lows are dramatically close. <laughs> 
as well. Uh, in Fortnite it's going over 300. Uh, as you know, Apex uh, has a cap of 300, so it cannot actually go over the 300. And uh, even in Warzone, uh, we are reaching around 240 FPS. That's probably the most impressive thing of them all. I really wasn't expecting it. So in uh, 1414p, getting 144 hertz is no effort at all. Uh, in Apex, it just maxes out 144 uh, FPS all the time, same in Fortnite. And even in Warzone, it gets close. So even for 1440p, I say, even if you get close to 200 hertz at 1440p, this thing is fine. Even if you have an ultra wide 3440 by 1440, like the one I do in, in my daily driver, it will be fine to play in that. So it's extremely good. But let's go over the synthetics at this point. So uh, we tested the SSD with Crystal Disk Mark, and of course this is the NetAC NV7000, uh, and it goes to 7000 in the write and close to 7000 in sequential read. So extremely good performance. It does all of that uh, while staying at a nice 55 degrees maximum. Then we tested, of course, the CPU with CPU-Z, and at stock, it does close to 800 uh, in single. It does close to 800 in single thread score, and it does around 16,000 in multi-thread, which is extremely good uh, as well. We also tested the temperature. Now, out of the box, there has been a bit of discussion about these rise and go pretty high in temperature, but it is by design. So we reach around 90 degrees under Prime 95 small FFT, which is not bad at all. We then tested Fire Strike, and at stock, we were getting close to uh, 50K in uh, graphics close to 45k in physics, which is probably the highest I've seen in a long time, and a very good combined as well, and a very good total score. And during all of that, the graphic card was going at just 56 degrees maximum temperature. That is because on this Gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti Aero White, they have reused the cooler that they use on the 4080. So it's actually a very oversized cooler for the type of card this is. So there's a lot of margin. But we can actually do all these numbers much better with some tuning. So I already have on the channel an RTX 4070 Ti undervolting tutorial. And I will also have very soon, if you're seeing this in the future, it's already out, uh, a Ryzen 9 7950X undervolting tutorial. Now by undervolting, we are basically keeping the same clock or maybe a slightly higher clock, but dramatically reducing the voltage. This gives us same performance or maybe a bit less or maybe a bit more depending on how you set it but it dramatically drops the temperature and the power consumption so what we did is we applied a minus 20 millivolt offset in the curve optimizer for the Ryzen 9 7950X and we set a temperature maximum of 75 degrees and while doing all of that we got this fire strike score as you can see we are very close to the leaderboard uh, even just having an air-cooled graphic card and a standard 240mm only one cooler on the CPU. And while rerunning the test with these undervolt settings enabled, we had a maximum power consumption of 350 watts. Okay, let me say it again. The maximum power consumption was just 350 watts along all of this, which means there's a 1200 watts power supply in there. It's absolutely overkill. And it also means that all the things that you've read on the internet about RTX 4000 consuming a lot of power and Ryzen 9 uh, with 16 core consuming too much power, they are all false. Uh, because in truth, it's just a matter of tuning your hardware properly. This thing can run on a 550 watt power supply, if it's a good power supply, if it's under voltage, it's, it's extremely nice. But this also goes on to show that the power supply is extremely good because it's giving us very good efficiency. There is a big difference between an 80 plus platinum power supply like this iTech that we have in there and a standard 80 plus bronze power supply that you buy off the shelves. This thing does help in reducing the power consumption from the wall measured with the watt meter, the one I showed you. Uh, and it does so because having very good capacitors, it filters the electricity properly and there's not much loss in the process. So I, I was extremely impressed with that. And also with the only one cooler, Again, remember, it's just a 240 millimeters only one cooler from iTech, and it was able to keep under wraps the 16 core Ryzen 9 the whole time, even at stock. But what's really impressive is that after the tuning, after being undervolted, it keeps it under wraps and it is extremely quiet the whole time. So that's really nice. You don't really need a 360 millimeters only one cooler either for this CPU, which is good. It means the only one. Uh, is made properly and I think the all-white cables look extremely nice and on that front let's touch on the aesthetic a bit 
I'm very happy with the color matching, how it came, but I do wanna hear your opinion, so do let me know if you like it, uh, especially the fans. What color should I set them? I am keeping them RGB by now. But the whole white theme of the build is nice, in my opinion. I like that the cubes on the only one are white. I think they match the dark cave in white, the case. I think it does match all the fans. And then talking about the fans, they do have that new wireless technology, which basically means you plug everyone into another, you've seen the little clip. And this really helps with cable management. So building in this high-tech dark cave was a breeze. It was extremely easy. So I'm very happy with it. It's always, you know, a bit difficult when you have like six RGB cables, you've got to plug them all into a hub, power the hub via SATA, connect the hub to the motherboard. Here we have none of that. We have just single cable comes out of the end of the three fans on the bottom. And that one plugs directly again into the motherboard or into the hub, depending on how you want to set it. So it's much, much more simple. And they deliver very good airflow because remember, the 56 degrees that we got on the graphic card isn't just because it's good, it's also because it's in a case with good airflow. Same thing can be seen by the VRM temperatures and by the fact that the SSD was cool the whole time. So all in all, I am very impressed with ITEC components and I think they also want to send a message with that power supply showing that they can make very good power supply and that you can do a fully ITEC build and it can come out extremely well if you pair it properly. So this is it for me, but do let me know your opinion down below. Would you have done anything different? Do you like it? What do you think about it? Do let me know. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.